All right, so we are going to pivot off of last week's video on modeling up this bracket. And I think that's one of the things that's hard for people to conceptualize about multi-body is the drawing portion. And um, I haven't seen a lot of videos really on drawings hardly at all, not any sort of real production type work. And I've done production work for these types of components for many, many customers. Lots of different programs as far as internal requirements goes. <clears throat> and so I thought we would step into maybe a broad overview of the drawings that I would set up for a part like this. How to navigate um, multi-part or multi-body uh, parts. This would be something I would call weldment because you end up with a welded part after you're done. Um, and as, if I get any comments or I feel like going further, we can go into the details of the drawings and how to set them up and all that. But maybe this video will just be sort of a working overview, how to isolate bodies and dimension them. So we'll step into that. So what we're looking at right here is a assembly of this Eaton bracket. Here's an Eaton hydraulic pump. We've got a bracket that allows for adjustment and then our mounting bracket itself. And what we're going to take a look at specifically is this mounting bracket. <clears throat> and so we're going to tab over to a drawing that I already started to set up. And so what we have here, um, so this would be a drawing set. I purposely deleted the title block out. I uh, don't want to include any of any customer information. And I purposely rearranged this drawing so that it's not customer specific. Um, I did uh, do, I do jobs very similar to this for a lot of customers. Um, this one I think was one of the more recent ones that I did. Uh, again, it has absolutely nothing to do with the specific customer, but the layout is loosely similar so in these drawing packages what I generally will do is I will this would be a component drawing package so this would be a drawing package that you would use to send to a vendor for this particular weldment and on the front page here what we have is just an isometric view we've got some generalized uh, information uh, what we're missing here on purpose is title blocks, zones, all of the other information that would maybe pertain to the company or maybe it's specific to their numbering system. Um, I do tend to use a watermark like what you're seeing here. So we'll kind of go through this. So let, um, oh, so first of all, drawing package is going to look like a front page that's a general front page. All your notes go there, all your general notes. Uh, if it's being post machine, there's some notes that go on here, or if it needs to be ground. All of your generalized notes can go here. Then we have a page that uh, spells out how many components there are. Your bill of materials is going to be here. Over the years that I've worked, I, develop, uh, I linked these balloons, these two part balloons. The top part is the shows the part number of the individual body and the bottom number is the page number that that body is on. So these balloons are very helpful for, for someone who's fabricating. They can go to page five and get part number three. And so it's time consuming. Um, I'll let you know ahead of time, there's a lot of time spent on metadata, on linking uh, um, notes. And if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to spend a whole bunch of time on setup. You're going to spend a significant amount of time, maybe a couple of weeks on um, your initial setup for your drawings, getting all your metadata in, deciding what sort of standards that you're going to use. And so in this particular case, we're talking about a weldment that's consistent of multiple bodies. So in SolidWorks, that's multi-body. So this is the general arrangement page. Uh, you'll notice that all of the dimensions are in parentheses, and that's because this part is self-fixturing with the um, with the um, tab and slots. You can't put them in the wrong place. If we had components that were being welded in 
that were not self-fixturing, then they would not be in parentheses. This is where all of your over your your top level notes go and your top level dimensions. So, and then what you end up with are pages that are body specific. And so this would be part number part number 1 or 0001 and again that's just arbitrary. I picked four digits that gives you 9999 part numbers to use. And so the ethos for these uh, multi-body parts would be, it's my preference that you never use the same part number. If you end up scrapping a part, you you obsolete that part number forever and you move on to the next part. That way you okay. never end up with a vendor who ha who's confused about what part they are, what uh, revision of what part they're trying to do. Uh, this particular body happens to be ordinate dimensioned uh, again, that would be up to you. So we're going to step back to the first page and we'll go into a little more detail. Okay, so on this first page, um, basically the first two notes here um, on the left side, the top note denotes what that balloon is for. So the top, is, top line is part number, second line is page number. And those balloons are for the fabricator or if uh, if the um, operator is required to perform some sort of quality check, maybe a 1% quality check on parts that come off the machine, then he knows what page to look at when he's doing his uh, quality check. And you're going to set your parts up differently if you're requiring quality checks. And again, there's a whole world of information about that sort of stuff. And then... Um, the single balloons are the part number of the balloon or the, of the part itself or the body in this case. Um, I have these um, watermarks on all the drawings and what it does is it tells the person looking at the drawing what the status of the drawing set is and the date that status was issued and by whom. And so um, valid drawing statuses are mentioned below in this note. Um, so we've got release for bid, release for review, hold for review, release for manufacture, addendum for manufacture, obsolete, and a superseded by. And you'll note that I can't pick on this because it's at the edit sheet format level. And that's on purpose so that um, you can't accidentally select it and then uh, the lazy draftsman is going to type over this. He's going to set the drawing status by typing, set the date, and by who it's by. And really, you want to make sure your watermark is consistent across the whole drawing set. So this is a, this is a block. And if I double-click on this, you'll see that the block is actually set up um, with linked notes. And you'll see that this is a note that's linked at the sheet level. So this is drawing status. This is, um, we'll click on this one down here. Um, this is drawing status date, and then it shows the format that the draftsman should be entering it in. And then, of course, the other one is um, initials. And where that's entered, that is actually controlled up here in um, summary information. These are your custom um your custom properties so you can see drawing status drawing status by drawing status date and the format that it's supposed to be entered in as uh, these are your values and then this is your evaluation or what it's actually going to read in SolidWorks let me let me pull this over so you can see it and um, that's set at the uh, custom properties level here in the drawing and so we'll bounce back out of here get back to the sheet and so uh, next page is the weldment itself we named this weldment uh, YT123 is the part number and so there's some secrets behind uh, the part the uh, the part numbers none of this is just typed in text it's all linked uh, this particular text here is typed um, so I realized after doing this video there's a couple things I missed uh, and so we should probably have um, we should probably have a dimension. OBS is taking some resources here. 
Uh, we should have a dimension here. And even though there's a tiny bit of slop in the... Oh, you dirty dog. Man, this thing is grinding. Uh, even though there's a little bit of slop in the uh, slot, tab and slot, we're going to treat it as if it's there's no slop. And that is primarily to make sure that the parts actually go in. And we are going to throw this dimension on here. And we're going to type in 2x as soon as SolidWorks gets done thinking here. Uh, because I'm having to use um, uh, software rendering, this thing is extremely slow. Okay, and we don't want stuff sticking off the top of the view there, so we're going to pull that down a little bit. And I think that's the only ones I missed. Oh, forgot to put that in parentheses as well. Okay, um, and so this is a weldment cut list here. Um, this is not a bill of materials. It's a weldment cut list. I made up the columns according to what I wanted. Um, if we actually go back, so this will give us an opportunity to do that, but let's go ahead and finish talking about this page first. So weldment cut list, balloons that are linked to properties. You can see the custom property there is PRP weld part number and probably PRP weld page number. Yeah, it's not going to show it. Um, uh, I've got a note on the part file itself for coating. So it's a 60% black powder coat. I want these parts to be sandblasted and the mill scale off of them. Uh, I want it to be welded and free from burrs, weld spatter, and any contaminants. And you, there's all kinds of notes you can put in there. Drawing status is there. All of the notes here are linked to this particular part. And there's some secret sauce in there. Um, and then we're going to move on to the individual body. So first body is part number 0001. It's the side plates. Um, I've ordinate dimensioned these. I missed a dimension somewhere. I see it now. Um, all of my water jet laser plasma cut parts have rounded corners and so uh, you have to dimension too sharp and all right so like I was saying you're gonna have to dimension too sharp on anything that's got a rounded corner sorry guys I'm trying to adjust my microphone here and you'll notice there's a 0 0.025 radius on everything here it's in an attempt to get the laser or water jet or plasma cutter to go around the corner so to speak you don't get dwell marks i don't know how prevalent it is i haven't worked with a lot of finished parts so i haven't had a chance to inspect the components myself you may not need to add corner radiuses or they may be able to be bigger because it's being welded um, this was a practice that we did at my last one of my last customers uh, like I said, I was never able to inspect the parts, so I don't know how effective the small radiuses were when it came to the laser itself. We were worried about blowout in the corners. Um, again, all of these, the only notes that are not linked is this general note here, TS equals too sharp, STS equals sharp to sharp. All dimensions are reference only, and DXF file is the control. And so... Uh, you know, we're not requiring any inspections on this part, this YouTube part that we've made. And so we have our watermark here. And we won't go into the setup just because for time constraints. But what we will do is we'll go ahead and get a new part started or we'll do the last two pages. So part 0002 and 3. Um, we're going to jump back to the main component and look at the metadata first real quick. 
and that's going to be in an effort to understand where some of this data is coming from. So we're going to pop back into the weldment itself and what we're going to do is navigate over to the cut list here and we're going to look at, we're going to right click and look at properties and I haven't experienced this link column before that's something new to me I, I'm not sure why that's there we're going to pretend like it's not um, if you if it, they're all linked they're unchangeable I'm not sure why that came in um, I would have to sit down and do some research so we're going to shine that for now we're going to look at these white items that I added so I added uh, the property name weight and I set that to mass I added the property name BOM description and in this case part number one is side plates part number which is 0001 in our case page number which um, page numbers are great so if you're trying to run on the skinny and save yourself money maybe you're cutting in house and you, you know your the overhead is nearly as much for the guy running the machine as it is for your engineers or maybe you've got a guy who's detailing and your machine guy is as much as your detailer you're gonna to try to save time where you can and so if your detail if your machine guy is looking around and can't and you've got large um, drawing packages that are going out to your team on the shop floor um, what you don't want is them spending a bunch of time trying to figure out your drawing package and so it takes you a little time up front to get the correct page numbers so what you know even if it's 30 or 45 minutes um, but it is a manual process we could go into the way SOLIDWORKS can improve this we're not going to right now and then this length um, option here I'm actually getting that from the bounding box up here at the top and so the bounding box length property is always the longest dimension of your body and so I just um, click on that copy the um, value text expression and then I paste it down into here and that gives us the length of the part and if and so that if we look over here there's folders on the left side this is part one if I click on the part two folder we get the custom information I've entered for this particular body you can see that the page number is different bomb description is different part number is different weights three pounds uh, max length on the bounding box is nine inches and so you're entering each of those items in part number three you're going to enter this metadata in and it would seem straightforward but if you had a hundred bodies that's where it starts to get lengthy it's just as long if you do it in assembly mode and the whole issue here is you should be able to load a text file in and populate this data directly or through an Excel spreadsheet but SolidWorks is too stupid to implement that so um, so you enter all your metadata in you okay all of this um, I name my folder and I actually name all the bodies now there's a reason for doing that if I change a, a part here and it and it's a significant enough change that it changes the body number I may or may not have lost my metadata that goes with that and so or if I if I put a hole in this side it becomes a different part than the part on the right you know if I poke some a hole in the part on the left then it will separate that out and you need to redo your metadata for that particular part assign it a new part number etc so that is where the um, the weldment cutlass properties come from um, we talked also about the uh, coding information that comes from the custom uh, property information uh, in the summary uh, tab here and so we've got a description so all of this information in my opinion would apply to the weldment itself so the description is the Eaton YouTube bracket part number for the weldment is YT123 revision is A materials HRS hot rolled steel A36 Actually, that is a typo there. That's double, double naming. 
Uh, it gives us our total weight for the welded part, and that doesn't include weld. Um, our finish in this case, uh, I use that to describe what type of part it is, machined, um, uh, EDM. If it's a single component, then your finish would be plasma or laser cut or water jet, that type of thing, and then coating. And so all of these, all of this data goes in at the weldment uh, multi-body level, the second page. And so we're going to bounce back to the drawing. And you'll see that uh, second page, all of these notes are linked to that data. And then subsequent pages are linked to the weldment information. And you can see up here, we've got part number, page number, quantity, our description. And generally, I actually would like to see this column in bold. And differentiates it if I had my druthers and obviously again SolidWorks doesn't allow this I would um, all these cells would be a light gray like it's like the way I've selected it it's showing it should work like Excel and again this these are things that SolidWorks doesn't really care about it's um, it's just not a necessity to them so um, Bill of material description, uh, the type of material, so it's quarter inch plate, the material itself, HRS, A36 plate, the weight of the material, and then the, the um, longest length. So the bounding, we talked about the bounding box. Uh, you don't get tick marks with, for some reason it omits the tick mark um, when it's got a decimal. And then we may be able to control that somewhere. Who knows? Um, so we'll get off this page because this page is pretty straightforward in this particular part. Uh, with large weldments, very large weldments, you may also end up with an exploded page where you pull things apart so that you can see some of your inner components. You're going to end up with a lot more sections, cutaways, details. You might have a couple of these pages that describe the bracket itself. So we're going to step forward to the part or the actual body file. So the quickest way to do this is just to copy and then paste. And the reason for that is, is you get a whole bunch of stuff automatically rolled forward, right? And we're going to rename this and we're going to rename it to just delete those out. And we're, we're dead. If you guys have lost focus, we're down here at the bottom uh, tab. We're renaming that. And then we're going to come up here. And what we're going to do so, this so, so you're going to get to see some of the secret sauce here. These notes are linked to this body via the leaders themselves. And there's a bunch of nuances that I've worked through um, and I know about SOLIDWORKS. And if you're going to upsize or downsize your view, there's some things that are important to do with your notes. Um, so what we're going to do, we don't want to use this body anymore. We want to de detail body number two or part number two. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the view. We're going to go up here to the left to selected bodies. And we are going to select part number two. And so we are going to select this back one. And we are going to leave them for right now. We're going to leave both selected and exit out by hitting the OK button. And now you'll notice that part two is right here. And there, there's a number of different ways to do this, but we'll, we'll do it this way first, and then on the second part we'll do it another way. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on one of the bodies, and we're going to go to Drawing Views, and we're going to go to Projected View, and we're going to project this over because it's in the wrong orientation. And then we are going to uh, select bodies on this one, and we're going to get rid of body number one. So we're going to delete that one out. 
and say OK. Now you'll notice on this view only one body is selected, right? We are then going to select all of this text here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll show you real quick um, all of the... I don't know how these are associated with the part. They're not touching anything. They should have to touch the part. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn off, turn those back off. We're going to copy this. So Control C, all the notes. We're going to pick a node, and we're going to say Control V. Now you'll notice it groups them all in one location, and that behavior is fairly consistent. I don't think you can paste to empty space. Uh, maybe you can. So um, this requires some experimentation. Um, if you want to keep your layout, it looks like you can paste to open space in the view and it doesn't group them all together. You'll notice that the um, balloon itself is not reading and we're going to go to more properties and we're going to find out that it's not actually attached. And so we're going to drag this up. Nope, I meant to drag the, uh, well, anyways, we're going to move this, this information here. We're going to get it centered on the view because what's going to happen now is this view is now connected to the notes and you can see them moving. And so, like I said, balloon two, the problem is the leader is not attached to the physical body. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. And as soon as we actually pop that onto the body, it's going to turn black. We're going to turn the leader off. And we're going to get that sort of read that we have. This separating line here, um, I have so many complaints about the way this works. This should work as a block. I should have everything in one block. The block should reference a particular part number. I should be able to set all of the notes to reference a particular body number. SolidWorks, again, can't get that figured out. Um, they, you should be able to construct a block that reads the body. And the fact that I have to connect the leader to the view is complete bull crap. Um, you can see that by copying that line onto the view, you can actually see the bounding of the view extends down to that line. If you, um, some of the problems here, I'll show you real quick. We'll get this deleted out of here. Yes. So you can see the process for getting a new view in. Actually, this is a good example of the view being too big. We'll see if we can make it fit. Um, nope, 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 nope. Control Z. We'll see if we can get it up close enough to fit. So if not, we'll uh, get to explore the happy things that go on when your notes are not tied to the same location. Will it fit? Will it not fit? Can I get my information on here? It's not wonderful. It's pretty big for the for the page. If you had a title block here, it wouldn't fit. So, um, we'll see if we like this or not. Uh, where was I? Uh, we were oh, so you've got all your notes linked to the new component. Um, we're going to go ahead and start dimensioning. So in this particular case, uh, we let's say that instead of ordinate dimensioning, we wanted to do a more traditional dimension style. So we're going to line these up. We're going to throw some dimensions on that bolt circle. We're going to use typical. Excuse me. I don't generally put a dot after typical. Um, I'm always worried that the dot could be read as a um, decimal, and and I just it just uh, scares me a little bit. I I don't typically um, put center marks on holes. Probably not a good practice. I don't like them. I don't like the looks of them, um, and especially when they have them when there's a bunch of extension lines everywhere um, so we'll go ahead and dimension this it's gonna be too big for the page unless I 
pull this down here. And let's see, we're going to get the tab. We're going to get distance to one side of the tab. Um, so technically this is a symmetrical part. If we wanted to add a symmetrical note, we could. Don't know if that's necessary. We're going to dimension off the bottom here. I think I missed some... I did. I missed the filleting for that. Um, continuing on, we are going to put a center line here. We're also going to get our bolt circle in. Okay, we're going to get, let's see, a bolt circle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our abbreviation in. We're going to need to append this note down here to also have bolt circle. Alternatively, you could put this in, on your front page or your second page, probably your front page where your notes go. The TS and STS could also go on your front page. And is this going to fit? Just barely. We are going to... Um, one of the other things that I was taught is you don't put dimensions on your part. They need to be out in open space. Why is that snapping like that? Oh, make me crazy. It looks like this part's not going to fit. We'll go ahead and finish dimensioning it and then bring this, the scale down. Um, we're going to put typical on our 15. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to put... Um, i got to grab my calculator because I can't remember how many times 15. Is it at 28 or something? 360 divided by 15. Uh, 24. Um, so we're going to put that on... Probably both of these. We could put typical, but um, at least 24x lets us know how many there are. Is there 24 spaces? 6 times 4 is 24. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. I know I'm missing some stuff here. Uh, we're getting close here. BC. We're missing. We're missing something. What are we missing? We're missing the thickness for some reason our material dimension. So we're just going to copy that from page 1 to page 2, maybe there. And we'll get it lined up down here. We'll get this divider pulled out. See if this was a block, you'd never miss it and it would always come in the same, it would always be the same size. If you could um, develop the insertion point, it would always go in the same spot you get a lot more consistency between title blocks. Um, oh, so I know what I'm missing. So I need to go in here and I need to get, um, let's see, filleting. So where's our filleting for this? Is it that one? Let's get those, like the edges there.
All right, now we're fixed. Save. I have my my computer set as read only, so that it's kind of a poor man's vault. So I always have to ask for access to modify the file. It just keeps me from accidentally checking something in if someone else is working on it. And we're gonna go really small. Okay. And it, you notice that when I added those fillets, it didn't blow this dimension up because I selected the sides and not the corn, not just the line. If I would have selected just this line, it would have blown up. Uh, let's see. And the let's see. This and this is also typical. So I can either put typical or two x. There's so few of them. I'll probably put two x. Really, I don't have to put 2x. It would be implied, in my opinion. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to put typical. It's funny, I have this... this. Um, I tend to do 2x for um, something that's two places. And if it's two, more than two, I put typical. I, I, don't, that's, I don't know why. I'm not sure what that is derived from. All right, that's a little short. We'll go here. All right, did I get everything? So if I remember correctly, when I downsized this, because these, these notes are not attached at the same spot, they're going to go all over the place. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm not remembering that correctly. So I'm going to change the um, properties for this page. We're going to go to... And hopefully the notes aren't going to move. And we're going to, we should be using sheet scale. Oh, good, they didn't move that much. But it's because they're not attached to the body itself, but to the view. I'm shocked that these are working. I swear that it used to be that you had to... Um, have them attached to the body itself. So is that, that's tied to the sheet scale. I'm going to copy this over and just make sure that I didn't screw up here. We're going to set that to one just to see what it looks like. Okay, yes, that was too big. Z. Oh, whoa, whoa, no, 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 we're good. So now that I shrunk everything down, I've got to, I got to fix all this crap that scooted in to a little bit too close. Oh, uh, well. Um, you know, I like the layout of this particular view, this, this sort of dividing line and all that stuff. It's just too damn bad that I couldn't make a linked block really too bad SolidWorks needs to take a page from uh, AutoCAD on that one make dynamic blocks so we're just gonna adjust all these notes because now they're way too close together and we're gonna the I so for me all of the all of the um, dimensions themselves should line up so in my mind these two here would be aligned left these two would be aligned right and this one here you're gonna get as best you can Having to push this stuff all over the place because this view is so much smaller. Uh, we're getting close here, guys. Okay, uh, we're missing something. We're missing our. I wonder if it moved because of the view. Yep, there it is. 
Edit sheet format. This is the kind of stuff that should just never happen. I don't know why. So something that's placed in drawing space, is it because the block is probably fixed? Coincident. Oh, there we go. That one. Control Q. Jamie and Christmas. If you place something in paper space, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I could come up with a logical way, but something that's p placed inside the um, edit sheet format, so you're behind the, the page, or you're, you're basically not looking at the page with views on it, it should be fixed to a world coordinate system. I don't know why in the world it's rel relative and it moves when you change the view scale. It pisses me off. Anything you do in this part of the drawing should be linked to zero zero, and zero zero should never change on the paper unless you physically move it. And I don't know why there isn't um, the zero zero should show as a UCS type icon and. Um, if you size the page differently, it should size to the positive X, Y portion, un unless somehow you're able to tell it to, with justification settings or something. Um, I mean, for crying out loud, you could look at, uh, any type of art program. And when you resize the canvas, you can tell the canvas what direction to resize towards. So uh, there's just some crap that I just don't understand why SolidWorks hasn't fixed it. It's absolutely insane. It's 2022, and and this thing still behaves worse than AutoCAD 1984 or 1990. It's unbelievable. So that should never happen. Drives me insane. Um, we're good on this page. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and do um, part number three. I'm just going to copy and we're going to paste and we're going to move to the end and we're going to rename rename 0003 so this time i think what we'll do instead is instead of using this viewport or view to make our next part i think what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a different um, view we're going to do a relative view. And so this is sort of, if you've never done this before, um, you can right click in the graphics area and select insert from file. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to insert from file like we didn't have one. We're going to pick this file, which is our bracket. And what this is going to allow us to do is pick some faces that we want to describe in the view. So very first thing we're going to do with relative view, we're going to choose select bodies instead of entire part. We only want one of the bodies. So we're going to pick that. And then we're going to go down and pick this body here on the bottom. And then it basically wants to know how you want to orient the view. And so in this particular case, I want it to look like this. And so what we're going to do is this face is going to be the front. You can change these. I can tell it what the top is, or I can just live with what it wants, which is the right, the right side. So in this case, I'm just going to live with that. The right side is going to be over here. And as soon as I hit the OK, we're going to be in here with um, the view and the body. And we're going to pick sheet scale for scale because we want to scale it to the sheet. And we're one to one right now. So we've got two views. We want the information from this view copied over. Copy. We're going to try just clicking out here in space. Worked great. Um, we are going to associate this balloon because it's disconnected because we pasted it out in space. More properties. We're going to get this arrow on here, more properties, we're going to now hide the arrow, and everybody's happy. 
we're going to copy this just this blockish you know this line separator onto the view get that pulled down get everything close here see if I try to select it while it's underneath the text I can't get it I don't know if I can use shift to get um, to select it or not so it's another gripe uh, is not being able to hold down the shift key and cycle through selections uh, yeah so we're good our text is associated um, we are going to get rid of this old view here do we need anything else from it we don't so we now have our last part okay so we're now going to dimension this real quick and again this is sort of redundant as far as how we're going to dimension this lots of things we could do here um, I try to normally dimension from the bottom so I could do this and that would cut down if I was having it inspected I'd be less likely to carry an error in this case we know the DXF is going to be our control so we're not so worried about it this is uh, more of an exercise in uh, having a drawing oops delete I'm so used not used to not talking. Um, you know, when you're just working, you're just zoned out. So, just trying to get everything filled out here. I don't like where this is at. This is too far out. We're gonna move this uh, over here where there's some more white space. I forgot to get those. We're gonna fix that real quick. So, let's see. Probably fill it five would be my guess. that get both of them it did sweet save because it's already open I didn't have to uh, recheck um, I didn't have to reaccess the, the part uh, let's see what am I missing here going to do um, I'm just going to do typical on these because there's four of them and now we got crap over the top of the part here oh, oh, come on what else did I forget so I have another thing that I do that's I'm sure would drive some of you crazy because I can differentiate between that large fillet um, and the slots and the tiny fillets on the bottom, they're not even close. I would never think that this half inch fillet was a 17 30 seconds radius. Which, why in the heck isn't it putting a radius on there? Hmm. That's weird. What's the deal there? Huh. I must have accidentally typed over that. Um, yeah. So just getting these things spaced out a little bit here. You could probably <clears throat> auto-generate them or whatever. I don't I haven't... We all have our sort of blind spots. It may be quicker to have SolidWorks auto-generate a bunch of this crap. Uh, let's see. We're getting close here, guys. We're getting close. Actually, we want this to go from 
basically when I'm doing these, I try to kind of treat it like it has a um, datum so that if this was being, I don't know, uh, just not introducing a lot of um, p possible errors by having stacked dimensions. Uh, why is it not showing three places? Why is it rounding? Should not be set to Huh. I don't know why this doesn't have the zeros. Is there something that tells it to exclu exclude the zeros? Hmm. Don't care right now. Come on, get that to line up. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I missed something. I'm just looking over it real quick. Uh, got the overall dimension, location 2, there's a depth dimension I'm missing. Right here, we got some white space out here. Um, I think that's it. Um, again, I could put a symmetry. So... Obviously, you dimension this differently depending on how you've been trained. If I was really concerned about conveying that this thing has symmetry, I could go in and put a center line in. And actually, that looks like a bend line. Hold on. Delete. Delete. If I remember right, I cannot attach the symmetry note to, again, SolidWorks, if you're listening. I can't attach the symmetry note to, hold on, uh, select midpoint, and then select the line and tell it to be coincident. Did that work? No, it didn't. Damn it. Um... <clears throat> Select midpoint, and pick the line, and we want, what? Why is this so difficult? Good lord. I shouldn't have to put a dot here, SolidWorks. Should just be able to select the midpoint of the of the edge and put this here. So what I was gonna say is if you use center line, I don't believe you can attach a note to that center line. It does not behave like a regular line. I think, however, I can attach a note to this actual line, like so. And I can use a um geometric symbol which would be where is it geometric this which is symmetry symmetry okay <clears throat> now there may not be a lot of people that know what this means but that means it's symmetric across that line so it may not be a very commonly used <clears throat> symbol the guy you're sending this to may have absolutely no idea what that means. Uh, There's not too many people that know what GD and T is. Looks like this page blew up too. Man. I 
just do not understand the methodology behind having notes move. Just should not happen, SolidWorks. I don't know what your guys' problem is. There we go. Um, so we're going to call that done. It was a super long video. Holy cow. Um, I hope this helps you guys. There's some other tricks that sort of go along with having these notes attached in certain ways. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that SolidWorks could do better with this type of workflow. Uh, but that's for another video. So... I'm trying to think if I missed anything else, you guys. We've got five pages in total. We have a um, overall sheet. This is where your general information goes. We have a sheet that is specific to the weldment itself. This is where notes about the weldment would go. And then we have uh, three pages that have to do with individual bodies. Um, I, for one, think this is a very clean very efficient way of housing information. I don't have a bunch of mates that go along with this, uh, with um, this um, bracket. Uh, if we look at my overall assembly here, we can see that there is um, a fairly small number of mates that put this together. You know, one's fixed in place, or it should have been. The only reason it wasn't is because the origin's not where it could have been. <laughs> and then the other two components are fixed to it. Uh, this typically would be in a purchase parts folder. Uh, so normally what I would do if this was a large part, I would move this into its own folder. And it would say PP for purchase parts. And the bracket would get moved up to here. And... This is actually the structure of the way that this would look. Um, there's another drawing type that would be just for this subassembly here, or this assembly, and uh, maybe we'll go over that next time. I sure hope this helps somebody, you guys, and I will talk to you next Saturday.